This is a manual muscle test for scapular adduction and downward rotation. We're trying to bias the rhomboid major and minor. Uh, I like this position of the arm off the edge of the table because it puts the scapula in more of an abducted, upwardly rotated position. And then as you bring the shoulder or extend the shoulder up and a bit into a bit of adduction, the scapula downwardly rotates and adducts. There are some resources that show this test position. Don't care for that and we don't recommend it just because um, it doesn't really add much to the test by internally rotating the shoulder. And also a vast majority of patients you see with shoulder pathology are unable to put their hand behind their back to begin with. So we've modified the test position from uh, compared to a number of different resources that are out there to uh, just this shoulder extended and adducted position. All right, so you can go through that range now. Perfect, you've met the criteria for a three. So we'll position the scapula and, and closer to its, its mid-range. Now I have the inferior angle of the scapula in my first web, web space. My direction of force is gonna be like this. So I'm pushing into abduction and upward rotation, which is opposite muscle action for the rhomboids. Most of my force is through my right hand. I'm monitoring for the scapula to break with my right hand, but I'm also gonna use my left hand at the distal aspect of the humerus just for a little extra leverage to try to break the scapula into that upwardly rotated and abducted position. Hold it right there. Hold, hold, hold. Uh, also notice that the patient is helping to stabilize her trunk by holding on to the opposite side of the table. One precaution with this, we're breaking our foundational concept of crossing distal joints. Uh, so again, we just need to make sure that we're breaking at the scapula and not breaking at the glenohumeral joint.